Hitchwood! Out in lead. There is Hitchwood. Back across goal! What a moment for the youngster! Driven hard towards the near post. Rules there. It's all the way through. And it's into the back of the net. The Seagulls are in front of the Amex. Hitchwood with the chance. Brilliant finish! Teenage kick from Jack Hitchwood to give Albion the lead. Up steps Simons. Grosden can't save, and it's in. In towards Simons. It runs for Terlin. She's done it again for the Seagulls. Charlie was diagnosed with a rare form of bone cancer at the age of nine months old. We were told by the surgeons that in order to save him we needed to amputate his leg, so he had quite a radical type of surgery called rotationplasty. He got his first prosthetic the September after um, and he learned to walk when he was two. Pretty much as soon as he learned to walk he learned how to kick a football. So the next step he did play on his prosthetic leg, probably up until he was about seven or eight. And then it started getting a little bit difficult because the pitches started getting bigger, the kids started getting bigger. There was a time that he, he didn't really want to play. He got separated from his friends and his football team and then he didn't want to play football for, for a while. He was really upset about it and kind of lost his confidence a lot. And then we found Brighton. It was just great to see him fall in love with football again. It just came alive again came along to us and this must have been quite difficult to come on to what is essentially an adult team but he's fitted in really well. When he first came along to our empty sessions he blew us away with his ability and since then really he's just continued to do that. Good, love that pass. He's been playing with men on a Monday night for two years now and yeah you wouldn't know I mean, he's half their size but you know he's, he gets around them pretty quickly. If you play against Charlie you are going to get a little bit frustrated because he is so skillful and clever on the ball. So how many times have you sworn under your breath if you skip the rest? <laughs> many, actually. He is, he's, he's fast. He's very fast. At that age for children, you would see they want to hog the ball all the time. Lovely, Charlie. And Charlie's not like that. He's a team player. Being part of the team has really brought him out of his shell a lot. Good, Charlie. Love the touch in the centre. And he's slowly now, he's starting to find his voice because I think for a little while he's afraid to speak up. Which is ironic because when you see him play, he doesn't look intimidated at all. When you see the sort of progress that he's made and the effort that he puts in, it makes you do that bit extra. A once in a lifetime kind of player and a gift really as a coach to have him. Yes, Charlie, love it. He's going to Belgium. He's been selected for the Junior England camp. His first international game, friendly game that they played against Ireland, he scored six goals, so he's, uh, yeah, <laughs> he's doing well. Well, I think the sky's the limit for Charlie. I honestly think Charlie will be as big as however the sport gets. So the bigger the sport gets, the bigger he'll be. I, I believe that. I mean, I know I'm his mum, but, you know, we, we get told and, and I can see it. I can see how good he is. I think if he continues um, going the way he's going, he could easily be the best amputee player in the world. People tell him all the time, oh, Charlie, you know, you're so good, you're so amazing. He just, he doesn't really take it in. He's just a boy, he just wants to play football. He encapsulates everything we want from a participant in the foundation. Uh, he's got a great attitude, always looking to improve, and gets on with people, he's humble. We had such a difficult time when he was a baby. It was such a whirlwind, and it just makes himself feel so proud. It just makes everything that we went through just go away and just makes everything feel like this was meant to be, and this is who he was supposed to be. from Sophie Bagley. She's done it again for the Seagulls. She's kept us in the game for so many times. Bagley's kept it onto the bar, still alive. It's kept out again. I think she's been outstanding. I think she's show up in important moments for us. You just can't predict where she's going to be. The save she had against West Ham. Oh my God. Back to Hayashi, it's towards the top corner. Oh my goodness, Sophie Bagley's kept it out. First of all, you're a bit scared <laughs> because you think the ball's going to go in. Somehow she's just there. Saved by Bagley. 
Magnificent goalkeeping. And she's there to make another super save. Brighton fans thankful to their new keeper. <laughs>we lost James on the 15th of October 2013. He was on his second tour of Afghanistan. It was brutal. It's the worst possible thing you can ever, ever imagine. And if if my life had have ended then, it would have been easier than continuing through the next few months and even now, 10 years on, it's an incredibly difficult process. The bereavement that I experienced was 29 years ago. When I was a teenager, my dad died, he was 42. He got lung cancer. He lived for six months beyond his diagnosis. And not all of that six months was particularly good quality, so pretty traumatic as a, as a teenager. I found that when my health started deteriorating in my early 40s, around the fact that I hadn't ever really properly dealt with my dad's death, quite a lot came apart. Me and my wife had our second son, Henry, in um, July 2022. And December that year, when putting him down for a nap, we then went to wake him up and found out that he was dead, where he laid um, due to SIDS. We never thought it was gonna happen to us. It changed our lives completely. I felt myself deteriorating and becoming less myself. That probably would have just continued. Four years after James died, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. It didn't bother me in the slightest. I wasn't concerned. And I only found that purely by chance when I did SAS Who Dares Wins, I had some healthcare issues which the doctor picked up in the jungle. I kind of think of it as a little bit of an incidental, but I also knew at that time that that's not healthy. Quickly after the show, I met a guy called Dan, his, his wife was murdered. We got together and we wanted to provide some sort of support for people like us who'd been through this sort of trauma. We put together strong men, initially just to take groups of guys away, camp on our weekenders, climb mountains, do zip wires, go to the pub, but just enjoy people's company because guys are so difficult to get engaged and get involved with stuff. What Ephraim did, he looked at how men best communicate with each other. So if you get two men doing something, or a group of men doing something purposeful, before you know it, they'll be chatting away about everything. That was the support that I liked and I craved. So what we've just done is use that for everybody else. It allows you to kind of talk more freely and openly when maybe you might not have done with friends or family at home. I think if you asked my wife and my children, they would definitely say that there's been a change in me. I'm much better for them as a husband, as a parent. It's like a release for me, going on to a weekender and expressing all this emotion. When you see the impact it has, that is the most rewarding thing. When you see the people it's helped and their families, and we have saved people's lives. So I've got previous connection with Ephraim. He's always been a great guy. He's always been someone you can rely on. He's always been great fun, creative. He's brilliant with everyone. A charity like this needs 
someone like him in charge. So focused on wanting James's legacy to be positive for so many people. To be able to say that this charity has saved people, has helped people, is a great legacy to, to him. If you take your eyes off the prize, a situation like his can completely destroy you and he turned it around and he's managed to get himself through that whole trauma and then go another step and now be benefiting other people as well. I just, I love that and I love being a part of it. Patterson back to Sarri. Sarri turns well and gets the cross in, it's glossed across goal and drops to Turnhands! Elizabeth Turnhands! has got a nice WSL goal of the season and it's one that worsens Bristol City's deepest relegation fears. Turland, too many options ahead of Elizabeth Turland currently, waiting for her rivals and then and she does have one in the space of Robinson, stands up towards the far post, towards Haley, cushions it back to Turland. What a goal, Elizabeth Turland. 60 seconds after Leicester City had equalised, Elizabeth Turland's 12th WSL goal of the season has Brighton Hove Albion back in front. Katie Robinson looking infield to Pinto, trying to flick it first time to Turland. Runs the set for Via Tricky Sari. A strike from Sari, and it's beaten Van Domselaar in the bottom corner. Hesitated for a moment and drove it hard off her laces towards the bottom left. Too strong, too powerful for Daphne van Domselaar. Gilmore, great prod through to Ferguson who turns and shapes for goal and Ferguson! Evan Ferguson! 18 years old and the world at his feet. Now it's a dingra. He was in great form on Thursday night and he's working his way in field here. Great run from a dingra, still going and a dingra's in. What a run, what a goal! An absolutely fabulous solo effort from a dingra. Aided by a clever flick. Does fall to Gross. Headed back out as far now as a stooping Yan. Oh, it's in! Another beauty from Purvis' stooping Yan. Straight back on the attack here. Gross is in for three. Put an eight, three! The roof's going to come off. The new signing, Wharton, bullied off the ball. Pedro and Gross involved. And then put an eight. Fine finish. It's Esther Pinian getting forward down the left. Welbeck gives it to him. Gets back into the area. Here is Welbeck, shooting chance. Welbeck does hit one! Oh, he certainly hits one! Danny Welbeck with the strike. For Pedro, instant control. Welbeck charges forward. Pedro drives in field. Oh, what a flick! What a goal this could be! What a goal it is! combination and they have put this derby day to bed when Anote thought about the shot might hit it this time oh what a strike for Kundo Buenanote rifling it into the corner it's a missile from the Argentine
across to Pinyan. Well, line one up! Oh! How about that? What a return to the Amex for Purvis Esther Pinyan. Can you believe it? He took his time, he thought about the shot, and he absolutely rifled it past a helpless Vicario. Lana, Gross, great ball for Pedro, it's opened up, Pedro! Albion were not to be denied! Top spot within Brighton's grasp, thanks to the Europa League top scorer, João Pedro, who does it again on European night. Toma definitely fancies himself against Tomato, and why wouldn't you? Because he's away from two, and Matoma breezing past, what a run, what a goal from Matoma! The dancing feet of Kaoru Matoma does the damage. It didn't look on from there, but he danced past two, beat a third, and then that is a classy finish after a magical run. Opposition defenders sick of the sight of Kaoru Matoma, but Brighton fans can't get enough. I joined Sussex Police in 2002 and I was based in Brighton. During my time in the force, I suffered a brain injury from an incident that happened while dealing with an offender, which has been quite catastrophic in my life now. It's caused me to have post-traumatic stress disorder, but also physically, I've got an injury now to my brain that will never get better. It will just slowly get worse over the years. I didn't notice at first how it must have had an impact on the children. Each day I thought that I was doing my best to hide it or mask it from them. But then I started noticing Levi doing little things, little gestures, making sure I was all right. Levi's my son, he's 25, but he also doubles up as my carer. He's always been quite a quiet lad, quite into himself, and we moved around a lot with my job. So when we moved back to Eastbourne, Levi then started to make a few friends, and one in particular, a lad called Ash. Levi and Ashley were funny together, just brought out the best in each other. Brilliant friends, they'd laugh and joke together. They just got each other. leave I got a phone call and he came downstairs and he was devastated it took me a while to get out of him what was the matter and he'd said that Ash had unfortunately killed himself there was nothing that could give any indication or any signal that was going to happen it was a total shock he had such a, a huge almost like a survivor's guilt could he have missed any signals and he just felt so responsible. It had a massive impact on him. He just took to his room. I decided I wanted to test my boundaries again. I wanted to go to football, and then I just thought, I'll go and ask Levi. I thought he was just gonna say no, but he looked at me and he could see, I think, how excited I looked about it. So he said, yep, I'll come with you. When we got off at Falmer and we walked up the slope, I looked at him and all I could see was his face light up. It was like someone had turned on a light switch. It's the first time I'd seen him smile in a long time. So after the game, and we won. Couldn't stop talking about the football. He suddenly had something to focus on and something to enjoy. You're recording, Mum. 
We just have the best laugh, the best fun. We go to all the away games. We've been to the European games. Thanks, Roberto. You know, the last thing you'd have thought that he'd want to do is be seen with his silly old mum. But he's not embarrassed. He never does anything other than just make sure I'm OK. Since Levi's been my carer, my life's so much better. I'm so, so, so proud and love him so much. It's Turnad who gives Brighton the lead inside the fourth minute of the match. And four and four for Elizabeth Turland. What a start to the season she's having. Driven hard towards the near post, all the way through. It's Turland reeling away in celebration. It's yet another WSL goal for Elizabeth Turland. Turland has got away from Howard and she's in. And Elizabeth Turland is on the score sheet again. Towards Simons and runs for Turland. It's her again, the now customary Elizabeth Turland goal. Field it goes, shooting, charging. Oh, what a finish! Gross against Vicario. Gross! No mistake! Now Gross, chance for him to dig out and cross, dig out. He does hit your way! A huge moment for Brighton. Gross across, great delivery, it's there! The wonderful cross. Gross's delivery was inch perfect. When is it not? Vitova cuts it back, should be 2 1, it's 2 1. Gross on the score sheet. Yes! Measuring it across the header. Oh, it's there! Gross is in for three. Put it on tight. Three! The roof's going to come off. First in there is Gross. Lovely little dummy. Right foot in. It's Gross again. So cool from Pascal Gross. Come on! Always an Albion favourite.